Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So as a recent bride, I wanted to share with you what I did on my wedding day. I did all of my makeup myself and my hair with the help of my mom. So I will share with you all of the products that I used and exactly how I used them. It's two weeks later, so I remember everything I used still and what I did and I thought it would just be really three, two, one, and I thought it would just be really special to sit down with you and talk a little bit about my wedding day as well, do an old-fashioned chatty tutorial because we're not going to put that much out there on the internet about our wedding day, um, and so this is kind of a fun way for me to reminisce with you in a way that still feels private for my husband and I. So, And as well, I thought the timing would be quite perfect for those of you who like a sale because right now is a Sephora VIB sale for 20% or 15% or 10% off depending on your tier um, of most of the makeup that I used. Um, I did shop at Sephora for virtually everything I used except for one main product that you'll see at the end. Um, and so I just really love how everything turned out. I used quite a bit of Charlotte Tilbury, Dior, but also some natural brands that I really favor for every day. So blank canvas, which is what I showed up with at the venue. I had a little walk around, talked to my wonderful day of coordinator. Um, I looked at the arch and its progress, the flower arch which was one of our big splurges for the wedding and it was just in progress so I didn't get to see um, as much of it in you know construction as I would have liked um, but it was still fun to do that walk around and kind of get to see what things would look like later on in the day so once that was done I went away and started to get ready with my two bridesmaids and my mom um, and so at the time I arrived the only thing I had on my face was this um, which was just the perfect light moisturizer I didn't want a lot of you know oily residue once I was going to go into putting on my makeup, um, but this worked perfectly. So I highly recommend this if you're looking for a luxury daytime um, cream that is light but really effective. Um, my skin is so dry these days. I don't know if it's pregnancy or the season, most likely both, um, but you can't really tell from the skin on my face, but the skin on my lips is just like the skin on my face and very, very dry right now. So once I had done that, you know, by the time I got in there and did my walk around, everything had sunk in. And so I went in with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, which I used instead of a primer. Um, and I mainly actually focused it around the T-zone because I believe this has silicone in it. And so it really helps to smooth everything on and make your makeup go on easier and I feel like I knew that this was going to happen can you see those little naughty paws this has been her favorite place recently to lie down even though of course she knows she's not supposed to but that makes it even funner so I just go ahead and pat that in working outwards and focusing anywhere that I feel like I have a lot of visible pores or little fine lines, things like that. The downside of getting ready at the venue, did you all get ready at your wedding venue or at um, home or wherever you were coming from, maybe a hotel or something like that? I think the only, only downside of getting ready at the venue is that then all of the vendors want to come find you as soon as they get there. So um, the photographer was early, videographer was early, and they wanted to talk to me and, you know, capture some of the getting ready moments as well, which somehow made the time evaporate into half. Um, so I'm sure it'll be nice to look back on those moments captured. I don't have my photos back yet um, at all, and I have the videography footage, um, which I'm editing myself, but I do not, um, I have not looked at it yet, so. We will have to see. Okay, so this is the base. It's nice and glowy, nice and moisturized. It has that kind of like more slippy kind of feel than when I had just applied the moisturizer. Um, by the way, I want to show off my beautiful ring here. This was a wedding gift from my husband's parents, and it is his grandmother's ring. Um, and it sort of looks like a shooting star, which I love. I feel like it's like getting blown up but so you'll see that and then of course uh, my ring which as you guys know if you follow me on Instagram um, this is both my engagement ring and my wedding ring right now because we are designing an engagement ring together which I will get later so 
very excited to have that come together but that is sort of a project for another day too I feel like time is slipping between our fingers now post wedding we're two weeks after the wedding now and baby's coming soon it feels like it feels real now so um, we're very excited but also we feel like we're running out of time um, so foundation I used. This is the product that I hesitated over the most um, doing my own wedding makeup. It is Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation. I felt like it was not very full coverage compared to what most brides wore, but looking at the little bit of, you know, casual photos that people have taken, um, it was plenty. Um, I would say it's still significantly fuller coverage than what I wear every day, which if you're not a foundation kind of person, um, this is for you. This is what I wear every single day of my life. It is so moisturizing. Um, it has hyaluronic acid in it and it like you really can tell it immediately plumps and smooths your skin. Um, but it definitely doesn't have, you know, quite as much um, coverage as I wanted out of a wedding foundation. So this is what I wore both to our rehearsal dinner on the Friday and to our wedding on the Saturday. And it's looking kind of light, but by the time we're done with everything, it'll be perfect. I promise I didn't have that weird like bride mask face or anything. And this is number three cool. Um, but you'll see I do a few other layers of things after, so I didn't want it to look too dark either. And I'll show you the setting spray that I used, which worked like a charm. That said, I practiced my makeup both with it as a base and without it as a base, so with just the magic cream. And I preferred lo the look, the smoother look, in my opinion, if you just use it as a setting spray versus as a primer as well. That's the benefit too of doing your own makeup. You can try different permutations, you know, the same um, skin look with different eye looks and so forth yourself in the weeks coming up to the wedding um, versus if you get your makeup professionally done you might have one trial I would think but not more than that um, which makes it harder to sort of switch things around and see how you know they affect the final look. Of course this is not a professional tutorial so you will see many professional steps that are skipped. It's sort of an enhanced version of my everyday makeup um, but one thing that you know professionals say that I did do is I brought my makeup down pretty far so I'm I'm only gonna bring it down to kind of like the base of my neck but on my wedding day I brought it down further than that. It's kind of one of the most important things because I do know that that's pretty hard to fix in photos and um, a lot of wedding photographers don't do you know a lot of retouching they'll just touch up the lighting I did kind of use more concealer than I usually would so I went with the v-shape making sure not to go too close to the eye because that's when you get a lot of settling into your under eye area definitely using maybe twice as much concealer as I usually would area because I have a lot of redness around here all hormonal and so that kind of triangle became bigger as I blended. Next step is eyeshadow primer and I can see closing my eyelids that I have quite a bit of kind of moisture from my moisturizer left here and just to be extra cautious sort of wipe that off with my finger and then there's makeup on the brush which is perfect because I don't need more than that across my eyelid but it's just that little amount that you need to even out any veininess. So final step of concealing is just to add a little bit of brightness without you know, adding a lot of layers. So I really like Touche Glaf for that. Um, I definitely think of it more as a highlight than as a concealer because as a concealer, it's really very poor. It's quite sheer. Um, but as a highlight right here on the inner and outer corners of the eye, it's kind of hard to replace, like I don't know a lot of other products that are quite as brightening. So if you're pale like I am, then I feel like you'll get to this stage and it's almost like you matched everything to your skin but ended up a little bit paler than you wanted to be. 
this is where my powder recommendation comes in because if you do the pro trick and use translucent powder, you're going to increase that even more, which is why so many pros use much more yellowy, darker foundations. I wanted more of a natural look, so I kind of flipped that in a way, and I used a powder that, um, although it's actually pretty light, it's 2N um, from Dior. What is this called? It is their um, Professional Performance Perfecting Translucent Powder. So even though it's technically translucent powder, you can see it's not translucent. It has quite an apricot-y kind of color to it, and I'm really happy with how this works. If you've been watching my makeup videos for a while, you know I got completely obsessed and addicted to the Armani powder that is now discontinued and have really struggled to replace it. I guess, you know, this is kind of a traditional translucent powder in that once it's on my brush, even like really like you can see I'm loading it up, um, you can't really tell. There's like not a lot of powder on the brush, which I think is kind of a good thing. Getting married in October, we had limited light to sort of have a smooth transition from ceremony into pictures and reception and into the dinner, which tells you that controversially and contrary to kind of industry norms nowadays, um, we did not have a first look. So we kept it kind of traditional, um, which felt more romantic to me. And I wanted that sunset light for photos that you otherwise probably wouldn't get for a first look. Um, so that was just my way of doing it and just telling you about our wedding and what I did. Um, but I know from our photographer that that was a sort of counter, you know, tradition nowadays. Um, way of doing things and made things somewhat more complicated, but it really made us happy to do it that way. Um, so we kind of went straight into the ceremony, then we had a brief moment with our guests and with signing the paperwork and everything, and then went off for photos after that. So you can see the base looks like me. If you compare the skin here, there's like no difference in terms of the color, no neck stuff going on, and that is what I wanted. Now, that doesn't mean that I didn't want any warmth or shaping to my face. So something that I did do um, that's kind of like more professional-like that I don't usually do every day, pre-pregnancy at least, is contour my face. So I did quite a lot of contouring around the jawline here to kind of cut that a little bit, I think is they say on YouTube, oops, I have a hair in an unfortunate place right here. Um, I didn't do a ton with my nose, just didn't really have time to think about that. It really works well. Um, I tried actually three different contour products in powder and in cream, and this was my favorite. This is the By Mario Soft Sculpt shaping stick in light. Can you tell I'm in my third trimester for how, from how out of breath I am? It's pretty like warm in this room right now, so that's part of it. Um, and for that, I really recommend a very dense brush. Um, this product actually comes with a brush that's decent. I use it now once in a while. If I wanna do a little bit of contouring, you know, just on a work day, let's say I've got some client calls or something and I wanna look a little bit more done. Um, I might use a little bit of that, but I usually use the brush that it comes with, uh, which I'll show you here if you want to see, if you're considering getting this. Um, it's a good brush. There's nothing wrong with it, but I think the rounded, slightly more dense shape of this one, which I'll link for you, um, really worked well for me on the day. And so this creates a little bit of a shadow kind of underneath your jaw in some ways. Um, so it's almost invisible. That is nice and slimming, um, which is nice because I'm growing a baby. So of course, this is not the slimmest my face has ever looked. I need drastic marks and I kept just bringing that down and down. And then I remember I used just the excess that was on here, just kind of like this. And there you go. That's the contour that I did on my wedding day. And you can see it does kind of warm up your face 
quite significantly. So unlike every day where I rely on bronzer for adding some warmth to my skin, I didn't feel like I needed to really do that after that contouring that I really like. So um, I used a big fluffy angled brush dipped in my favorite bronzer. Um, which is the Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light. This is so old. I mean, you can see it's had pan like many times over. Um, but if there is a product that I loved, I didn't really want to like switch it up by buying a new one because what if the formulation is different? Um, and so I was kind of liberal with where I applied this and just kind of focused on the outer parts of my face. It was actually my backup dress for our rehearsal dinner. Um, I wore a pretty formal dress actually for someone you know who is 28 weeks pregnant at the time of getting married um, and so I wanted something that wasn't going to steal too much attention from my actual wedding dress um, the day before but I still wanted to wear something pretty bridal um, so this is my backup dress that I um, ordered which is a really pretty pale pink um, but the one I actually ended up wearing which I can insert a photo here so you can see um, was actually white um, and lace as well. I really kind of went with a lace theme for the wedding because I love lace and my grandmother wore lace as well on her wedding day. So that is kind of it. You know, you can see I put a fair amount of bronzer on, but um, it hasn't done too much um, to make my face to like a vacation-y either, which is what I wanted. For a more kind of dramatic look, I use the Anastasia um, Brow Powder, which is great, um, but I actually used the Rare Beauty Brow Set here, uh, which comes with, with its own little brush, which is the one that I used, and I use the shade on the right to do my eyebrows. Can I do this? Yeah, we'll do this tiny little crappy mirror. Um, this is the best lighting in the house right now to get daylight, which is why I'm using like all these tiny little mirrors. Same brow gel I use every day, which is the Ilia. Super natural as well. I wouldn't say this has like a ton of hold, so if you want to do anything too funky and fluffy with your eyebrows, this might not be best for you. But if you kind of prefer more of a natural look, I really recommend it because it has no visible finish, if that makes sense, so it's not shiny or matte, it just looks like you have nothing, um, which I love. So that's kind of what I did with my brows. Nothing too crazy. Oh, do you want to see my wedding scent? So this felt very me because I went to the Tom Ford counter and smelled everything because Tom Ford fragrances are usually my favorite um, for splurgy occasions at least. And everyone always says you should wear a new fragrance on your wedding so that you remember that day with it. I wore a combination of not new fragrances to create a new sort of scent combination and this is it. Um, so this is the scent I wear in the summer every year for the last three years at least. It's Soleil Blanc. It smells like vacation. It has a hint of like coconut and white flowers um, are very dominant along with a little bit of like that sea salty sunscreeny kind of vibe. And then this is my favorite date night very sultry scent of all time. It's pretty strong and it smells like vanilla and saffron and a little bit of wood, but mostly vanilla and saffron. It's heavy handed, um, especially, you know, depending on how much you spray it on. I think I'm a little bit more sensitive to very strong scents um, pregnant, but I loved the combination of these two. And so that's what I wore on my wedding day and I'm really quite happy with that. Um, nonetheless, I am shopping for a new, you know, single spray kind of scent to wear every day, which is what I'll wear, I guess, when our daughter is born. So it feels actually more important <laughs> than our wedding scent in some ways. Um, and because that's what she'll probably remember. I know I remember what my mom wore when I was little, which is Amarage by Givenchy. Smells like my childhood. So I guess I'm kind of looking for the same thing for her. Um, I always thought that that would probably be Coco Mademoiselle, which is a wonderful scent. Um, but I cannot tell you why. Lately, it smells a little bit sour to me. I don't know. I, like Maybe I'll get back into it, but I'm not feeling it right now. Um, so I've ordered 
some new options in the Sephora sale, two new options at least, that have been highly recommended by two friends, a one online friend and one real life friend, both of whom have worn those fragrances, so we will see um, what they turn out like in real life. Um, as you know, it's the VIB Rouge sale right now, so anything you want to try from this tutorial um, it will be, you know, mostly in the sale. I then did my blush, and here's what I did for blush. So. This is a Dior Rosy Glow, which on my skin actually really, really pops in a beautiful way and gives me that healthy glow. But I also wanted something a little bit more autumnal than this. So I basically use this as a base high up, kind of like here. I bought a new blush, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Sex on Fire for your wedding day. Um, and I blended these two together, but focusing more on the middle, sort of getting more of that kind of plummy color. And kind of spread that out a little bit further than with the rosy glow. Like that. This palette, which if you are looking for a matte palette, probably the best one I think I've ever tried. What I did is I used quite a bit of this peachy kind of nude shade across the eyelid. Across the eyelid, like so. And then I use this more kind of minky mid-tone into the crease, already kind of creating a tiny bit of a shadow. I went with quite a light shade and used that in the inner eye corners, like so, and a little under the brow bone. And I did a little beginning of an outer V and into the crease. And this is quite warm compared to what I would normally use, but it was perfect for my wedding day because a lot of our florals were very warm toned um, without being pumpkin-y. I told them no orange, so that means I had a lot of burgundies and peaches and really beautiful rich colors. Um, we had a lot of dahlias for our flowers, um, which were gorgeous. A lot of time after the wedding. Part of why I'm only freeing up now to do this tutorial with you, um, drying the flowers and I microwave them um, to get them to really dry and to be completely flat finish between dishes. Um, you can get this professionally done. I wasn't feeling like spending the money after, um, but it's definitely something that you can get done. Um, and then you can arrange it in these clear frames. I'll show you in a vlog um, what the result looks like. Um, I haven't done the one that um, I'm gonna spend the most time on. I'm doing some smaller ones for favors. I've already given my mom hers, um, which is made up of flowers from my bouquet. Um, and then with the remainder of flowers from my bouquet, which had quite a lot of flowers in it, um, I'm making an arrangement for our daughter's room, which I'm very excited about. So um, that feels like a really special memento. And so I know flowers are ephemeral and, you know, of course it doesn't look exactly like the flowers on the day once they are dry, a lot of them lose a bit of their color. Um, but I'm really still very pleased with how it's come together and it's something that I recommend. Um, so these colors kind of remind me a little bit of that. Eye makeup. Um, I was very careful to blend everything, so going in with a little bit of some of the more mid tony kind of colors, making sure that the crease was kind of warm and well blended. Um, I did go in with a pencil brush and I did go in with a pencil brush and then a combination of these two. So this one's too dark really, um, but I wanted it to be, this one to be a little bit darker. So I mix the two for kind of like a warm dark brown and did a little outer V thing. And then used same brush, dome shape brush, and blended that out. Ready? And I just went in like so. Kind of coming in from the top always feels easier to me and like you get less of that product in your tear duct than leading to crusty eyes, which is not good. Did a little here and like that. 
and that you know immediately brightens things up in a pretty way and then what I did kind of in a hurry by then because I remember them um, the videographer there kind of filming this part so um, I basically rubbed aggressively my middle finger first in the pink and then in the more like taupey but like still very shimmery both of them shades and on the kind of inner third going into half of the eyelid did this and just tapped it in So I'm just going to do my eyelashes and liner and everything exactly like I did on my wedding day, but minus the falsies. And this just so happens to be how I do my eye makeup virtually every day as well. So I did a thin wing. Like so. And I tried to really keep it pretty small with the wing with the idea that, I don't know, I love my winged eyeliner right now, but in 20 years it might not be as big of a thing. So I did a little bit of a smaller wing than I normally would for like evening makeup. But as always, if you feel like it's like a little too much and kind of like popping more than you want it to, just use a dark brown on a pencil brush and kind of blend a little bit which I think it creates like a really nice splattering soft look to it that you know you still get that drama more so than if you'd used a pencil or brown liner because this one's black I used brown when I was blonde but now I'm back to using black but I really like the look that that creates all right, and it always looks a bit funny until you put on your mascara. And I've been using two steps recently, every day. Um, but, you know, especially on my wedding day, this was nice to have again, so I wouldn't have to use like really big false lashes. It makes a big difference. And this was um, actually a gift. Well, this is my second tube. I repurchased it. But the first tube I tried was a gift from one of my mom's friends who swears by it. I've never liked mascara primers until I tried this one. So highly recommend that. And then I use my favorite mascara, which I recommend if you have a special event using it for a while because mascara is like a bottle of fine wine. You want it to age a little bit. Uh, it never looks as good when you first open the tube and use it as it does a couple of weeks later. So that's what I did. And I did two coats. And a uh, trick as well that's, I think, important for that primer to work as well as I know it can um, is to apply your mascara right away. Do not let it dry. Um, you really get more length out of it if you don't let it dry first. Last face step favorite highlighter right now. I love this highlighter so much and was waxing lyrical about it that um, my mom used it on my wedding day too. And so I just went ahead and put a little bit. So pretty and natural looking, but really still gives you like some pop, you know, like some pizzazz, um, which I think is fun without looking like a glow ball. Hairspray for your face, also known as setting spray. Um, this is the most natural one that I could find. I like that it doesn't move your makeup around. Um, it's not too wet. Um, it just really sets in like a minute. And then there was my lip for the wedding. And so I'll show you what I did um, before the ceremony. And then this is the product that I use throughout the rest of the evening after because you know how like you're just in between things you want to spend as much time with your guests as possible. I remember I wanted to get to the reception as fast as possible after taking our photos but I like ate some nibbles and kind of ruined my lip a little bit and so um, I used this to touch up throughout the evening just really quickly. Um, so this is kind of the more 
um, I don't know, carefree, easy way of um, getting this same shade um, that I used for my bridal look. And it is Dior Rosewood um, in that balm, which I often wear for work and videos in general. Um, but this lip liner lasted throughout the whole night. So it really was more like I wanted to touch up the creaminess of my lips. Um, and so I definitely did more on the lower lip than the top lip, but I still used it all over. This is Kitten Mischief by Elisa Eldridge, and it is the perfect kind of match. It's very similar to Pillow Talk, but I would say um, when talking about the lipstick, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit creamier as well, like a little bit more pink, more bridal in my books. And I can confirm that it was first husband and wife kiss proof. So it did not outlast, you know, eating. We had such delicious nibbles. What did we serve? We served scallops wrapped in bacon. That's probably the one that ruined my lipstick. Um, and uh, little zucchini fritters. And uh, the food was just so good. We served roast beef for the dinner. Like we went all out with the food. That's the finished makeup look. And... I'll link everything that I can think of that I used that I may not have mentioned um, in the video in the info bar down below, including the tutorial that I used for my hair because I did have my hair half up in a twisted kind of look that was so perfect. It was perfect for tucking in my cathedral length veil. I don't know if I recommend that. I really wanted a dramatic veil. I got my dramatic veil. It had lace on it that matched my dress. My dress had a little train, but nothing too dramatic, which actually that worked really well because I was able to even dance without having it bustled or, you know, up in any way because it was just a little train and the fabric was very substantial with a thick lining and everything so it just moved really really well um, and we only had 30 guests and so there weren't that many feet to step on my dress either um, but so for my hair I wanted it to have be half up because I needed something to tuck this big heavy veil into um, and I gotta say the veil was a little annoying I was happy to sort of take it off um, because it just was so much fabric to manage um, but it created beautiful photos so I guess I have no regrets just saying if you want to be more of a low-key bride I would probably get a shorter veil um, than what I ended up with um, but I had this comb tucked in which I made myself you can see it's got all these stones on it and freshwater pearls because I really could not find anything online I was not into making something because um, I just was so short on time in the few weeks before our wedding um, but I couldn't find anything that I loved and so I had aquamarine earrings that I borrowed from my mom as my official something blue but then I added some blue um, crystals and some citrons um, to this to add a little bit of color and pop and so this tucked right into um, the little nest that the half up hairstyle created and it was a tutorial um, in terms of the twisted half up look that my mom followed and she knocked it out of the park we struggled quite a bit in terms of making out the tutorial at first neither of us are sort of hair people um, but we practiced I think twice before the big day and and then she just got it perfect on the wedding day. It just was so pretty and it lasted all night with some hairspray or actually Oribe texturizing spray, um, which I prefer, but really like not that much. My hair was still soft and like touchable, you know, not hard and crunchy um, on the wedding day. And I just loved it. It was great. It really turned out beautiful. It was fun to share this little vlog with just random thoughts and little um, moments of reminiscing with you and I will see you in my next installment on style.